Welcome to another Coffee with Samso. We're here at the UWA Club in Crawley, uh, University of Western Australia, uh, where we're talking to um, ASX companies and we're, we're their leaders and talking about the strategies and their stories. Uh, I've got uh, Venture Minerals back with me today. Uh, Andrew Rodonjic is here. He will be sharing us with uh, one of their announcements going back probably a bit two weeks ago uh, on their cooling project. Um, cooling is actually quite interesting um, from our previous discussion. Uh, we've touched on it before, but I think it's uh, a good time to sort of maybe go in a bit more in depth and just to, to, to show and discuss why I think it's actually more than just a five letter word. Um, Andrew, please go ahead. Thanks again, Noel, and it's, it's great to be here talking about um, what we've been doing at Cool and uh, announced that a couple of weeks ago. Um, look, it's, uh, we originally pegged this asset um, back in 2018, and I don't know if you remember the, uh, the G88 uh, you know, potential nickel sulphide discovery that was happening, that story, and I remember the, you know, the, st the stock price uh, went up, um, you know, went from 20, Five cents to a dollar twenty for G88, and and uh, we managed to peg some ground around there, and we, were, we ended up being in the ballot, and we were unsuccessful. But we we pegged a whole heap of land looking for these ultramafic ultramafics, which had potential for nickel, copper, and and PGEs, and we came up with our coolant project, which we originally called Pingaring, and uh, so even back then, we you know we'd been looking at that southwest Yulgarn area. Now, very few people look west of the Southern Cross Greenstone Belt. You know, you go all the way across to, to the end of the Yilgarn Craton, which is just in the Darling Fault, and it all becomes a little bit too hard, despite the fact that we've got the second largest gold mine in the world, uh, Boddington. So, sitting in the mix we have uh, one of the world's biggest primary lithium mines um, in Greenbushes. And obviously you've got uh, Iluca's mineral sands operation, our carb bulk site. So you've got different commodities and sort of world-class assets. Um, so, but you know, no one's really had a crack at it for um, for uh, for nickel or, or copper uh, and PG until until Julemar discovery. So you know, you're starting to all of a sudden get a whole bunch of even a different commodities, some quite good stories. So you know, so we pegged our our call and block back in back in 2018 and and. Uh, and we pegged it for nickel copper PG, which is our original idea. And we also knew that BHP had a, had a gold anomaly there, which, uh, which obviously is part of that announcement. We, 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 uh, we showed there's potential at depth already. And, and considering uh, you know, our intersection there of 18 metres at 0.6 gram per tonne of gold is 40 kilometres away from the next drill hole, uh, it's a pretty exciting result you know, based upon drilling underneath a 100 ppb soil anomaly. So very early days that yet, yeah, there, but um, but now with this, with this announcement, we've come back, if you like, full circle. We had these opportunities to get acquire some adjacent land, and and uh, and certainly, you know, ever since the Julemar discovery, that land package has been that area has been pegged out completely, and we we're very fortunate to get what we got because Anglo America done a huge pegging frenzy through there, and uh, and picked up land at. We wouldn't necessarily have picked up ourselves, but uh, we're very fortunate that uh, a company dropped a block of land next to us. And we did a joint venture that was to the north and to the south, our main block. We did a joint venture on that asset with some, with some, some nice historical, um, I suppose, results, albeit shallow, which showed the potential for that nickel copper PGE in that area. So, yes, yeah, it's a great result. and. Um, and uh, when, you, when you couple what we've done there at Coolin now, we've got 600, over 600 square kilometres, um, we've got two 20 kilometre long uh, uh, nickel copper PG uh, perspective layered intrusive complexes, or intrusive complexes. Uh, there's two 20 kilometre ones and one 10 so far. Um, you know, we've got a, a lot of work to do there, but it's pretty exciting potential, but combined that with our other Nickel Copper PG opportunity in our, in our portfolio being the, uh, the Chalice Joint Venture down in the southwest. That puts us in a very enviable position, you know, in terms of what's in our portfolio. So, uh, you know, early days and, uh, and certainly, you know, the work, early work done so far by, uh, by Chalice is indicating that there are 
uh, EM conductors down that, that warrant testing and obviously the best part of that's still to come uh, in spring once it uh, winter finishes but um, you know we're, we're very keen to to get back on the ground at cool and add, add some value there in areas that really haven't had much work and done them for uh, for various reasons over the you know the last uh, few decades I mean <clears throat> when we did our um, sort of first coffee Sam so we went through some of your projects and we, we obviously touched on coolant and not much work done. But I think why coolant is interesting for me is that it's sort of out there by itself and in an area where not a lot of people have interest. I mean, a lot of people in the industry probably knew of the prospect, but I think the, the lack of capital funds and, and the, the you know people pushing you to go there with the money has created this isolation issue, right? And we, we and not a lot of people know that in Bridgetown there was gold there and things like that. So in this southwest region, has always been sort of the, the holiday spot, but then they don't relate it as a mining area like a Kalgoorlie or a Menzies or something like that. So when, when all this happened, when Julima happened, people still didn't really see the trend. But when you put it on a map, like you're in your announcement there, where you can see it now, um, you can see all these so-called isolated deposits, like you mentioned, Boddington, world-class stuff. You've got Greenbushes, world-class stuff. And they just seem to pop out there. And do you think this could be, you know, was already there and this could be the, the you know, maybe the icing on the cake for going in this area? Well, look, I think, uh, you know, the people learn, as people do more work, they learn more about it and, and, and certainly, you know, one could argue that, you know, very much scratched at the surface so far in, in that area. And I think, you know, with time, um, and again, the exploration that's been done there before has been restricted just to, to boom scenarios. So, you know, like, okay, well, everyone's pegged, you know, the Campbell, the, the Goldfields area. Everyone's looking there, let's go and have a look in the southwest. And there's these phases of, ex sporadic phases of exploration during boom times, but quickly they retreat back to their, you know, they're better known districts, if you like. And as we've learnt, you know, and, uh, you know, the discoveries, recent discoveries, you know, like Tropicana, the gold discovery, that's kind of way out there. And the Fraser Range, likewise, with, with, uh, with Nova Bollinger. And, you know, unless you, unless you get out those other areas and sort of, you know, pull the blinkers off and have a look, at, you're not going to see what's potentially there. And, you know, most geologists have required, oh, it's a, you know, it's highly metamorphosed, everything's been strung out, it's hard to find. And yes, it is. The rocks are harder to recognise. You know, when we did the drilling there at uh, at Tor, we need to do a look, put get, get a full suite of geochemistry just so you can start getting your eye in about what these rocks used to be before they got cooked up. You know, were they felsics, were they mafics, ultra mafics, and 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 very quickly you start learning to to see what you know what matters there and getting your eye into these sort of things. And you know, what we proposed there, and and, and that you know, doing that map took some took some time, I was very careful, but, you know, look, you know, the literature there is not recent. It, it, you know, we, we will create, along with Chalice and all the other explorers, uh, and no doubt the GSWA is gonna be focused in that area. They'll start looking at more, doing more work, doing more geophysics, and all of a sudden, that map will become better, and more accurate with time. And, uh, and then all, and people, all, other people start making more discoveries or more Julemar type discoveries. And, you know, we're starting to see that initial phase where the neurology players are having a bit of a look, but you know, I suppose we're stepping back and looking at the more, you know, the, the geology in a, in a much more regional sense and seeing what trends may exist. And you know, if that metamorphic belt, you know, continues and there's a reason that that's that area is a bit more uh, conducive to mineralisation, um, then uh, you know, we're we're well positioned with cool and with having a you know a good, you know, good solid land. Uh, land position, which, which allows us to, you know, if there are discoveries to be made, to be well positioned for that. And, and you know, that, that, you know, to hear, to see somebody drill, you know, a private group, um, you know, you know, 10, 15 years ago, drill four rab holes down 22 metres and get nine metres at you know, nearly 0.2 grams per tonne platinum palladium combined and 16 metres at 0.12% nickel, basically from surface. Um, are encouraging signs, but it needs a lot. A lot of work still needs to be done. And you ask why what, this wasn't explored before. Not only is the fact that there's an issue in terms of 
it's not fashionable or it's not easy. It, everyone, everyone goes for the low hanging fruit, but also access. You know, um, you know the, the farming communities there. Um, what you find at you know a generation ago, pe- explorers weren't welcome. You know, generation later, the hardships of farming. Of farming. Uh, you know, it is you know marginal country for for um, and and hence the next generation potentially doesn't want to be farming. They want to be a bit more commercial. So all of a sudden they let people onto the land and and uh, and you get the opportunity to explore these things. And I think that plus you know airborne geophysics is much more um, you, know, you know getting a lot more information from not even getting on the ground. So these sort of things and, and we're going to fly airborne EM next here on our primary southern target on one of our two 20 kilometer long um, nickel PGE targets there at uh, Coolin is that you know we said are there any EM anomalies there and then we can go and start you know maybe putting some holes into that and and seeing what we can come up with and and uh, whether it's uh, similar to what Julemar is or or, or or something or some other sort of nickel copper PGE uh, deposit type then uh, you know time will tell but you know we're pretty excited by the opportunity. When you, I mean, the whole market's, you know, everyone's talking Julema, Julema like and all this, and the nickel, copper, PGE statement. I mean, we all know what nickel, copper, um, what's the fascination? I mean, could you share with us your thoughts on why this phrase nickel, copper, PGE is taking such a stranglehold on the market at this point in time? What, what's unique or what's great about it? Well, I think for a start, um, you know, the, so there's been some, I suppose, comparisons um, with, with your Norilsks and other nickel copper PG deposits in the world, and and um, but um, I think generally people are excited about nickel. That's one, you know, one aspect. Obviously, that's an EV component to that. Um, and and I think uh, there's also a genuine um, shortage of PGEs, but there'll be a, there'll be a huge requirement. Uh, for further um, platinum group metals in the future going forward as well. And I think from what I'm hearing, there's a, there's a huge shortage of that uh, on the horizon. So uh, that's going to be pretty pretty important. And I think that, um, you know, to have something sitting on, on the doorstep of Perth, a new discovery, um, excites the market. And I think, you know, generally people like, like I suppose, having, particularly in Western Australia, you know, very parochial that... You know, we've got a you know discovery of this sort of scale happening in in in, uh, in WA, but I think everyone loves having uh, a nickel discovery. Yet somehow the passion is always there. Like Nova Bollinger is a great example. Uh, Cosmos with Jubilee, um, you know, these are all very good examples of that of sort of the hype that kind of can create. Um, but um, you know, someone said to me, "Be finding nickel near Perth." I think you know would have been struggling to see that. But when you when you when you sit there and you look at the work done even down in the southwest at you know Western Mining and Anaconda were looking for nickel, you know during the nickel booms back down there. So obviously, you know main ingredient is it's still the Yilgarn block. Um, it's just trying to locate these greenstone belts, which are a little bit different to what they are in in the Cambalda, uh, Laverton, Kalgoorlie districts and Menzies areas. It's sort of it's um, you know. If, if the desire and the hunger to find these type of deposits exists, then eventually we will find better ways of finding them and looking in different areas. This is still, Yilgarn is still, you know, one of the most mineralised Archean blocks, one of the oldest blocks of earth sitting in the, in the world. And, uh, and sometimes you've got to just stand back and acknowledge that and say, well, you know, where do you go hunting for the next one? You're not going to find a Kalgoorlie next to Kalgoorlie. You'll find a Kalgoorlie maybe somewhere else different, and uh, or you'll find another Cambal, another group of Kamadiite um, um, system, and, and maybe 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 we've got one of those sitting in our area. You know, time will tell. We'll get to work. We'll do the work. Put that in, drill some holes, and we, and then um, it'll reveal its secrets to us. And then it'll be it'll be a little bit different different form. It may not look like a typical um, because of the. Um, high metamorphism that's gone through it might not look exactly the same but you know that's how you get upon these new sort of uh, groundbreaking or company making discoveries is by is by operating this area and that's always been our philosophy adventure is to is to go looking where the ingredients are still there but not quite the same and being a, like a first mover 
uh, being part of that group and, and uh, you know, and we've pegged blocks and areas like that and, and, this, and, and Tor was a good example of that, looking for, um, you know, we for the, were good areas for whole mineralisation. And remember Tor was originally a, a lithium target, then a VMS target and then becomes a nickel copper PGE target and that's sort of, maybe that, uh, you know, based upon the different styles of mineralisation that exist in that southwest corner of the yield garden that, um, you know, maybe that's, that's an example of that. that um, but, you, you know, we, we will unlock its secrets, it'll take time, but, you know, obviously I think operating, for me operating out in the wheat belt area where the population density is a lot less, probably going to be a little bit easier than maybe trying to drill, you know, around Bridgetown, for example, where, it's, you know, there's a huge population down there now, and it's, as you say, it's more of a a tourist spot now than a um, mining, district. mining district. Yeah, that, it's sort of. Um, but uh, look, I think it's uh, um, it's an interesting district. Uh, it'll take it'll take explorers like Venture um, and Chalice to lead the way to unravel the secret of these things, and, and people will will uh, will go in there and drill and like the Fraser Range. Um, with what Legend have done, you know, it, it, it up pops another one. And whether there's a field or a district of these that exists, who knows, maybe along that trend we, we, we sort of show on our map there, there is uh, a Julemar here and there's a you know, Campbell style over here and there's a, there might be a few different, um, different opportunities. And we won't be able to unlock those until we basically find them and start mining them, the reasons why. I think one of the, I mean, like Thor, the fact that you guys drilled and you did your own work, I, you know, we met that comment where, you know, it's very likely that the Chalice will, will find targets when they came in to do their, their work. Cool, and I think it's also interesting in the sense that you've, you've got that historical drilling. You know it's mineralised. It, the numbers may not be mine grade, but at least you know that there's something cooking there, so it's just a matter of finding where the source is. I think, you know, like you mentioned that, you know, Anglo is taking a big position around you guys. Surely they must be thinking that, you know, they've got Big Brother there, you've got, you know, we, as explorers, we always go to where it's easiest to start with, meaning, you know, an adit or a, a shaft and looking at chips around there. So maybe, you know, Anglo's getting a bit lazy and comes and knock on your door. Would that be something possible, do you think? Look, I think, uh when we always grab, you want to grab a sniffing ground position and, uh, you know, either, either to give yourselves more probability of success, having more targets, and like I said, we've got three pretty, you know, good, big size targets, um, you know, and if you're looking for something that's of that sort of scale and have the opportunity to find something of a world-class nature, um, then, you know, you will attract those potential partners down there of that size, you know, and and uh, you know, like with the Chalice joint venture, uh, we attracted that group. But you know, it was only until they just, they knew what we'd have already found. You know, two years before they'd found Julema, they recognised that the potential of that project. And uh, and we'd work Coolin, then people will, will you know we get success there. You know, we've got all the ingredients. We know there's you know in in the southwest your gun there's this da database that the CRC LME produced of it did it. Did it basically a 10 kilometre grid of laterite sampling over the entire southwest yield guard to try and encourage people to go and do exploration there. In fact, that's the reason why tech uh, got in there because of the, some of that early work and drilled and found some VMS next to Tor. Um, but if you look at that data set and you plot some of the highest grade chrome rich rocks, well, Coolin and Tor stand out like a beacon. So we've got the chrome rich rocks, tick, so you know it's mafic, ultra mafic. You know it's got nickel, have nickel potential. We've gone out there and we've now got you know significant PGEs. You know, at you know at on surface. Um, you know the next phase for us is to, is to fly that over to at least that 20 kilometre southern anomaly, in which there is that drilling done historically. Four rab holes. That's all that was drilled. So it's, there's a lot of work still to be done there, uh, and get some EM anomalies, and then and then. And you know, start poking some holes in it to see if we can come up with, you know, a new discovery. But we, it, the drilling we did on the gold, we never actually tested the nickel copper PGE. But 
you know, that was a real eye open in terms of the rocks we came in, and, and he could actually started seeing um, some quite interesting uh, styles. And certainly, they're, they're definitely intrusive. There's no doubt about that. We could actually you know, determine that from that program. So um, went back and relooked the core, trying to build these geological models. And and uh, like I said before, you know, to get that gold result in the first pass is uh, is, is a great. It's a, you know, it's a very good start for, for an initial program, especially considering when I mean, it's pretty much elephant country. There's, not, there's, there's very little out there. So, I think that's what I like about a lot of your projects in the sense that, you know, especially, you know, obviously Thor sort of um, parked up now. You've got your, you know, the, the guys working there and, and Coolin's the next one that you work on. Um, look, we, can't, we sort of can't end this conversation without um, talking about tin because... Uh, in July, Tin decides to go for all-time high run. I personally w was actually quite surprised to see it. I didn't actually um, watch it run, but you know, it hit 36,000. Um, and we, we've talked about Mun Lindsay before and, and your Tin Tungsten play there. You know, when you see something like that for you guys now, um, it must be you know, a, 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 a good comfort that if this price hangs around in this kind of scale, or in this zone, I should say, um, that project would be very, very close to be a good project again. Look, um, you know, the, the price is unbelievable. You know, at uh, the RIU conference in, um, in February, it broke 30,000, then it retreated back a little bit. And tin has been prone in the past to, to do that. Um, but we seem to have a structural change with the need for, for tin in electronics, the demand for electronics because of the uh, everyone having to work from home, um, the uh, the fact that you know for the EV for Matic, you know it's in the anodes of the batteries, electric vehicles are going up. Obviously, everyone's building an electric vehicle. Everyone's phasing phasing the old combustible fuel vehicles out, and and all of a sudden the um, um, the tin has run out. Now we ran, you know, EV production was stalled by the lack of semiconductors, which is what tin's used for. Uh, and that was part of the reason, as well as the fact that obviously there's coronavirus issues in terms of workforce. But there's, there's like a day supply of tin around. So this is all of a sudden the next jump, which I think was back in uh, April, May, is now sustained and kept on moving mm. forward. Mm. So this is, you know, very exciting time. We've never seen prices this high. This is 170% higher than the lows of 2016. And the other good thing for Mount Lindsay is that tungsten's 70% higher than at the same mm -hmm. time. So that's mm -hmm. that plus magnetite, which is worth a small fortune per tonne, makes Mount Lindsay mm -hmm. a very attractive proposition. And, and we've got a, we've done a feasibility study. We're going to do, we're going to dig, you know, an open pit on top of Mount Lindsay. And, uh, and as we told the market back in um, 2018, 2019, we're going to look at going underground, get a smaller footprint, make it easier to permit, but also to get that capital requirement down. And, and to do that underground operation, um, you know, we can see that uh, the CapEx requirements are uh, you know, more like $50 million instead of a $200 million for, an, for an, open, you know, uh, an open pit. So that sort of scenario um, is, uh, is very attractive in this market. And, that, and the great thing about it is that we can see that, you know, in, in the time period that Riley is being mined, those couple of years, we can we can we can actually finish off the permitting and build. And we were going to we've simplified the flow sheet, we've done all that. We were going to use the Riley equipment to be the front end of the plant, mm -hmm. and and still that could be a, could be the possibility. Once we finish the Riley equipment, we might as well use it for mm -hmm. for crushing the, the ore to feed the um, you know the, the gravity circuit for the for the tungsten, tin tungsten plant, and. You know that that happens, then uh, it's be a very, very nice operation indeed. And and the great thing about it, we'll be able to capture these high tint prices. So you know, I'd expect that the uh, we never announced the results at Scopey State, never quite finished, got very close. Uh, but I'd, I'd, you know, the financial the financial uh, model on that would be very attractive at these levels. And and still, you know, uh, you know, when Riley produ starts producing the iron ore, the idea is that what well, that money will be used to advance the Mount Lindsay. So you get a two year iron ore project and turn that into an eight year tin tungsten project. And the drilling we're doing now at Mount Lindsay 
uh, drilling a long strike from Renison Bell, Australia's only tin mine, essentially, um, and, and in areas that are in an old, under an old historic tin field, with an EM anomaly, pretty exciting opportunities, is that, you know, we want to make sure that we don't have eight years mine life, we have, you know, 20, 30, 40, make, make it a multi-decade opportunity like every other mine on the west coast of Tasmania. You know, like Renison has been going 130 years, Rosebury 85 years, uh, Savage River, the magnetite mine, 50 years, um, and even Mount Lyle Copper Mine, even though it's been closed down recently, that's 120 years of mining history. So here's a great opportunity for us to, to make more discoveries there at Mount Lindsay. And, and Riley will, be the ena will enable us to do that. And then once we, we become a, uh, a tin tungsten producer, um, then, uh, you know, hopefully that we'll see many decades of that going forward. So it's, it's, it's yeah, that's, that's the flagship for the company. There's no doubt about that, unless, of course, Charles make a discovery down a tour. It would be, would be very nice, but, uh, you know, the company is very, has many opportunities, many things happening. Um, and that's what's the great thing about it is that uh, we have, you know, any one of, you know, several, you know, I think up to five projects there could yield something quite attractive. And uh, so it's, it's, as always, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of different things. And, and I still think the market probably hasn't appreciate the, the tin. And, you know, oh, and I don't, the fact that you didn't yeah. know that the prices there was almost shocked, well, shocked me actually, but I, yeah. I, I, uh, I thought uh, you might've known, but you know, it's, the tin price is at a, uh, a level which, uh, you know, don't be surprised to see 40,000. Right? You know, it, it looks, yeah. it looks I, very I achievable. That, that, that tin price, I mean, it's, it's the fact that when he hit 32, to, and I, I thought, you know, look, if he hangs around here for a while, this will be looking good. And then we talked about that ESG issue, you know, the supply and everything. Um, and I, I didn't anticipate for sure to be running that hard. But that also tells me that the market, the guys that know, has said, hey, this is um, going to get worse. Hence the price run. It didn't hang around that flat price. Everyone's just doing their thing, right? That, I mean, that's just, just a narrative I'm, I'm using. Um, but when it ran to 36, that's when I thought, hey, you know, this is a new, new sector now. We moved into a different realm of tin pricing. And, and you're right, it, it could go to 40. Because if, if that narrative is correct, that they, they're saying that there's a, a demand supply issue, that 40 is, as we said, right? Well, you know, just, just pointing now in my presentation, talk about you know, Wood McKenzie stating that 90% you know, of the world's tin is not ESG compliant. Yeah. And that, and you know, and Mount Lindsay sitting on the west coast of Tasmania, got hydropower going past it. Um, you know, we will be looking to, to um, you know, put the tailings back down the hole. Instead of being open pit, it'll be underground. It'll be, it'll be much reduced footprint. That's what it's all about. And then, you know, we'll, we'll look at, you know, doing ore sorting and try and make those stopes underground as big as possible. This is not a narrow, you know, Renison is more like a narrow vein type of ore body, new gold analogy. Ours is, ours, you know, we, have a, we can mine a high grade zone with a low grade halo. So, you know, if the ore sorting can help us to get, you know, convert more of those resources into reserves, then instead of having maybe a half a million tonne per annum plant, we'll make a million tonne and all of a sudden double our production. That'll be the idea. And whilst we're, we're doing that at Mount Lindsay itself, we're drilling, you know, for a Renison lookalike, or we're drilling for other, other Mount Lindsay lookalikes in the area. There's, there's plenty of targets, you know, like we told everyone, we've only drilled 10% of our targets and that hasn't changed. We haven't, we haven't drilled a hole since early 2013 until the hole we just drilled. And that was hole 336. So we already drilled a fair whack of holes. But most of those are infill holes at, at Mount Lindsay and pushing it down plunge. So there's still a huge amount of untapped potential and we had, you know, 12 high priority EM targets on the EM survey we flew um, back in 2019. And, and uh, you know, several dozen lower order targets. And, and you just, you know, when you look at Mount Lindsay and the EM, you see, you can hardly see it register because of the fact that clays have the clay zone sitting above it. So it's masking the signature. So, um, you know, so it's, it's uh, EM's not always the be all and end all, but uh, just it depends how, uh, you know, close it is to the surface and, and on the weathering profiles, et cetera. But um, yes, yeah, you know, it's still very much, you know, we've got, 
the reason the same team stuck together for so long, you know, we've got through the, you know, the, the down cycle and the commodity prices there, um, is because there's a huge belief. You know, so we want to go and build another team. So Riley gets up, Riley becomes its own, looks after itself, produces the cash flow. In the meantime, we're getting Mount Lindsay ready. So we need to build that separate team and get that done. And, and that will allow us to uh, you know, convert from being an iron ore miner to be, to be a tin tungsten miner. And, and don't be surprised you know, if, if tin gets on the critical minerals list soon like tungsten. So, and with that, you'll see there'll be a, a desire for, you know, for government to uh, be interested in assisting us, you know, should, should, that, should, we, should we need it. But there's a, there's, it, government can assist in many ways, but you know, to get the government support because it's a, they're critical minerals will, it will be an added bonus for that for Mount Lindsay. People don't, uh, well, they underestimate the ore sorting process that would benefit a deposit like Mount, um, like you guys, because you know you, you're actually reducing waste and you're actually increasing your grade, and then your production goes up, right? Because of that, and your return, obviously. I think I, I've had my experience with ore sorting with the tungsten stuff in in New Zealand when we were doing that, and we looked at it and. The, the numbers that came in, if you got it right, is amazing. You could, you could upgrade something that's, you know, not even near economic to very economic if you get, get the things right, right? So I think that's, that's very important for you guys. Oh, exactly. And, and, and no, back then, you know, all sort of technologies improved so much. Yes. Since then. And yes. We, we, you know, at the same time, we, we also considered it for Mount Lindsay, but it just didn't seem to be at that point that the technology was going to be working. And a lot of it was around computer power that you know trying to make that decision of whether to, to reject it or keep yes, it you know, you know right. as, it, as it falls off the belt you know and you know to process that but now of course computers have changed a lot in that, in that, in that decade and uh, and uh, Renderson have, have uh, three all sort of sitting down there working mm. well been probably there for 18 months now already so that's that gives us confidence that it can work at Mount Lindsay as well oh yeah I've, I've seen a lot of um um, writings and, and articles on, on how it's improved since, you know, back in those days. You know, mind you, that's almost 10 years ago um, we're talking about now, the technology. Uh, and it's, it's, it's made, a, it will make a lot of difference to a lot of projects um, in terms of ore sorting. And obviously, you know, I, I mean, we've talked about Mount Lizzie a lot of times and, you know, t you've only really touched 10% and it, where you've got, you can see most likely you're going to find all the veins anyway. It's just a case of Money drilling, money drilling, you know, um, and, and it's you know the right tectonic setting helps too, I guess. Oh, yes, we're we're very well positioned. It's uh, like I said, you know, there's an alluvial tin field there. There's you know, there was mining back in over 100 years ago at, at Mount Lindsay itself, as well as the Stanley River tin fields. So all the ingredients in there, and and you know, we may find just pure tin deposits. We might find tin tungsten combinations. We got so many targets and, and and a lot of the reason why the west coast of Tasmania is still highly prospective is that you know is because of the infrastructure you know and the reason we've got a road going past is because of the hydro dams otherwise that to use a flying fox and go over the Pyman River back in the 60s and you hear the story of people getting dropped off a helicopter for a, for a couple of weeks with a with a swag and, uh, and a food supply and, and go out there prospecting it, it's it's not easy work and uh, so there's still a huge amount of prospectivity there and, and it, again touching on the airborne EM survey we flew you know again this technology has improved so much in the last five years you can start looking through um, you know through through the cover and, and starting to get a bit of an idea what what lies beneath and and uh, there's no doubt there's many more world-class discoveries to be found on that on the uh, you know, on the west coast of Tasmania, you've got the Mount, world famous Mount Reed Volcanics, uh, yielded BMS deposits, um, and uh, and obviously uh, the tin tungsten world, King Island, you know, being a great example of tungsten. Um, you know, this is one of the uh, you know the premier you know tin tungsten districts in the world, so it will yield more. There's no doubt. I think there's another thing you touched on that um, we didn't sort of talk about. You know, the the whole ESG component's a big part of most commodities today and you know having hydropower uh, would, would is, is the critical thing you've got that kind of green power feeding into your project your project becomes greener 
over time and like you know you're doing also in re reducing your waste and how you you expose yourself i think you know that that green tin green tungsten play can actually manifest itself over time i think well way the project is uh, located there's a great opportunity to do that and the strategies we're putting in place in terms of the way we're handling the um, uh, the tailings putting that back down the hole reducing the footprint I think we've uh, we'll be ticking a lot of boxes yeah. on that ESG side of things oh, that's good yeah. look Andrew we can go in forever as <laughs> usual yeah. I mean then I always tell people that you know when I talk to the likes of um, Andrew I don't have to prepare much it just happens <laughs> Um, but again, thank you, and it was great. You know, it's a good, good update for us. You know, I just wanted to bring the understanding of coolant to, to viewers, um, and I think that we've, we've achieved that as well. Um, and guys, again, you know, at this point in time, I always ask you to reach out, ask the questions, because um, I think venture is a very, very uh, unique beast in the sense that you know, you've got your, your Thor parked away, you've got your Mount Riley parked away, and there's and from the beginning, it's always a matter of time that you, you get this activated and timing and, and, and funding, which is looking like on track anyway. Um, but again, thank you, Andrew. Until next time, let's um, keep in touch. Absolutely. Pleasure as always.